All right, the time has come to take a closer look at our 110 scale custom Peterbilt 362 cab over. So first thing you'll notice, it doesn't really fit in my photo booth. It's sort of crowding the tools there on the right and it's taller than my scale wall. You might be asking why even build a 110 scale, they're so big. Well, that's because I don't like 114 scale semis. They just don't mix well with all of the other 110 scale stuff that we have. Uh, and um, I'm not gonna buy one because of that. So I decided uh, to make one. So that's where we're at. So this is pretty sure the only cab over 110 scale semi in existence. If you guys prove me wrong, drop a link in the comments below and let me take a look at it, but I'm pretty sure this is the only one. So dimensions, front to back, it's a little bit over 34 inches long, so just about a yard and it's about 11 inches wide. And you guys may recognize some of the running gear here. And if you know me, you know that we do a lot with the Center Racing F450. I already have those axles modeled. And so it made sense just to use leftover parts. So we've got Center Racing rear axles and a Center Racing front axle under this rig, but really could have been done with anything. Um, you'll also notice our Alcoa style wheels. These are just some red ones that we had and I thought red and charcoal would look good together. And also you'll see our stainless steel top hat bolts. So having the correct wheel and tire size was really key to this project. And once I made these wheels, I knew that I wanted a 110 scale semi. So let's get into some more of the details. All right, first thing, let's talk about this awesome cab. So I cannot take credit for this. This is a SLS print that Dustin of 110 Rod Shop did for me. Uh, he then glued the pieces together, did all of the paint and sanding and body work and polishing and clear coat. That is not a talent that I have. Um, I'm sort of anti-paint myself. So thankfully he did a killer job and knocked it out. And this charcoal came out really cool and complements the colors that I wanted to do on this. You guys may have also seen that he built himself a long nose uh, Peterbilt. Um, but I like the cab over. I like Terminator 2. I like the chasing with the Freightliner. I used to watch Knight Rider as a kid, so you guys may remember the Goliath um, cab over in that series. And you may even recognize my driver. So that is the driver or the Terminator from T2. And you can see our interior there as well. So Dustin made the cab for me and once I had the cab, I knew the dimensions and portions that I wanted. So let's get into the details a little bit closer front to back, and then we'll pull the cab off and take a look at the build. All right, so there's the front end of the Peterbilt. The glass is just Lexan that I cut out and I 3D printed those little frames that sort of snap in place. And that's what holds the windows in. Same thing with this frame. Just made these little mirrors and copied the shape of the cutout there in the door. The grill is another SLS item, came out really nice. And then the bumper, because you know I got like things low, I had to take it down pretty far. But that's the setup on the bumper, and it does have a hinge uh, just behind this area. So there was a lot of work getting the steering, the front suspension, the cab mounts, the bumper, all to fit in that area. So we'll show that with the cab off in a few minutes. Um, also made the steps and then the diesel tanks are kind of cool. The brackets attached to these aluminum rails and they are held in place by some large zip ties and they're hollow. So inside this tank are the receiver and in the opposite tank is the 5000 Ma 3S battery. And you can kind of see poking out between the tanks. That is just a no-name three-gear transmission that I turned around backwards and flipped upside down, which gives the truck its unique uh, driving characteristics. And basically what it does is you can run all axles driven, or you can run just rear axles driven, or you can lock the front and spin the rear for donuts. And so that's just a dig transmission that's turned around backwards that allows me to control that from the transmitter. So speaking of the frame, the frame is three quarter inch aluminum plywood edging. And 
it was just cut to length and then drilled. There are tons of holes uh, drilled in this frame. And to make sure that I made everything really symmetrical, I actually made templates and used the 3D printers as guides to drill the holes exactly where they needed to be so everything is nice and square. The rear suspension is, you know, kind of inspired by a real semi. Uh, and it's just a trailing link design. The kind of see there. It's actually suspended on air. It is a pneumatic um, cylinder that is printed in TPU and is sealed. So it does provide the rear suspension. All right, so let's take a look at the back of the cab. These are some three quarter inch powder coated black stainless steel shower head extensions that I got on Amazon. And then I just trimmed off the threads top and bottom. And you can see the mount that we made to attach them to the chassis. Coming back, this is a part that is from Cross RC and it's functional. So we will eventually have a trailer attached to this. I just don't have space where we live right now. And then all the way back, you can see we had to do the classic trucker girl mud flaps. These are some flaps that are designed in Fusion and printed in TPU along with the brackets and the tail assembly with the tail lights. And I still need to do some wiring here. None of these um, lenses are wired up. We're going to run some three or five millimeter LEDs to finish that off. So it's a little hard to show, but there's our interior again with the trucker girl theme on the steering wheel. And we've got that classic cab over interior and then some seats that are designed and printed in TPU, which are pretty impossible to see, but there they are. And the forgot to mention earlier, the headlight assembly is again uh, designed and printed and the lenses I used a hundred percent wall. So that gives it that sort of I don't know, lens-like flare where you can see concentric pattern. All right, so we've got the cab tilted up and it's pretty simple. I did have to drill a couple of holes here because I wanted to brace this body. It's quite heavy. And I utilize the steps that I made with a small adjustable bracket that helps to locate and secure the cab when it's in the running position. So now we can take a look at the diesel tanks a little better. These are just some press fit caps. You can see our battery. And luckily that this tank dimension was just about the right size for a battery. So when I made the first ones, I realized it was going to be short on space on this build, especially because it's a cab over. And so lots of space inside these tanks. So power comes out and then crosses over into the opposite tank for the receiver. And then you can just see so we can show there you go. You can just see our two in one uh, motor and speed control there. So let's take a look at some of the drive line. You can see it's a mix of drive cups and telescoping drive shafts coming back into the rear axles. And this is a die cast diesel motor that I thought looked appropriate and I had sitting around. So we incorporated it into the build. And then you can see some of the parts here. Um, you'll notice twin shocks up front, again, to hold up some of this weight. And you can see a radiator shroud and radiator that I printed and hiding inside that is our front steering servo. And then you can kind of see the inside of this body along with the floor of our interior. So this motor is pretty cool. The radiator fan actually spins. Too bad nobody will ever see it with the cab on. And you can see some of the bracketry here. So this is just a three link with pan hard set up on the front axle. And that's kind of the build. It's not too difficult, but I would say it is time intensive, especially when you're talking, doing all of this body work. All right, so here's a closer look at the front end with the body completely removed. Again, you can see that die cast motor and then maybe see our steering servo hiding in there. And so I designed again, all these parts in Fusion and printed them on my Prusas. These are printed in PETG, so it's durable. You can see how the front bumper attaches here to the frame. And then I left this tilted. That's actually the hinge mechanism for the cab over. 
So it tilts forward on that hinge. Getting all these dimensions just right was a task because you can also see your steering is there and our front axle. So a lot of stuff going on in a really small area up in the front here. And then just made these scale looking brackets to hold our radiator in place. And I watched some videos on real cab overs so I could kind of see what they look like under the body. So again, this pulley and belt system actually functions up front. So we've only got about, I don't know, five or 10 millimeters of travel on suspension. And these are just the stock Sen Fury tires that come on the 450s with our own wheels. All right, sorry about this view. It's just not gonna fit any other way, but here's a closer look at the suspension design along with the pass-through axle, the carrier bearings for the drive shafts, our transmission and motor setup, our shift servo hidden underneath, and our front axle and suspension. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video on our 110 scale semi-project. Future plans are to finish the wiring. We've gotta do some cab lights, do our headlights, do some amber running lights and our tail lights. And also we're gonna be building a trailer for this. Not really sure if we're gonna be doing a flatbed or a big box or a drop deck, but we'll figure that out later on and we'll shoot some video for that as well. If you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.